So ladies and gentlemen, our good follower of the channel, Desert Mantis, brought this guy up the other day and it triggered a memory of me in me that I had never talked about for about 49 years. Now, as a young child, I used to visit uh, my secondary hometown community of Beldoon on a regular basis. Now, that community at the time had a lead smelter that would throw pollutants in the air that could kill anything within 10 miles radius if you didn't wear a mask. Now, my father was coming back from a trip to Bathurst, wanted to stop for a pop at a local convenience store. And we went in, we noticed there was a 1973 OPG uh, box uh, full of packs ready to be bought. Now, the cards must have been there for a while. I think this was in the summer of 74 when I got them. But when I bought the pack, all the cards had pretty well turned from the pollution that was being thrown off by the Beldoon smelter. Now, one of the cards in that pack was a very unique player. At the time, I had no idea who he was, even though I watched the 1973 World Series. It didn't ring a bell. But the guy they call Mr. Met, Ed Cranepool was one of the uh, major cards in that set because Cranepool had big respect amongst the faithful for the Mets and eventually became the only original Met left with the team uh, into the 1970s and almost in the 1980s. Now, Ed Cranepool, born November 8th, of course, in New York City, debuted with the Mets on September 22, 1962, and played with him until September 30, 1979, his entire career. He had a career batting average of 261 with 118 home runs with 614 runs batted in, but it didn't reflect the appreciation that he got from the fans for being a multifaceted player. Now, he was an all-star selection in 65, won a World Series with the team in 69, and is a part, of course, the New York Mets Hall of Fame. Came very close against the A's in 73 when the, uh, the Mays Mets uh, lost in seven games to the three-time champions. Now, he played predominantly first base, but he also played the outfield. Now, born in the Bronx, Cranepool attended James Monroe High School, where he began playing baseball and basketball. Mets scout, scout Bubber Jonard signed Cranepool in 62 at the age of 17 as an amateur free agent. Now, after batting a combined 301 at three levels of the Mets minor league system in 62, Cranepool received a September call-up in Jussie's first pro season. At age 17, Cranepool was six years younger than the next youngest 62 Met, a reflection of the disastrous decision of Met management to select mostly older veterans in the expansion draft. He made his major league debut wearing number 21 on September 22, 62, as a lead inning or defensive replacement for Jill Hodges, Gil Hodges at first in a 9 2 loss to the Cubs at the Polo Grounds. He grounded out to Cubs second baseman Ken Nubbs, his only at bat. He made his first start the next day, September 23rd, playing first, and went one for four with a double. Now, Cranepool began the uh, 63 season splitting pain playing time with marvelous Marv Throneberry at first and Duke Snyder in right field. By May 5th, Throneberry's ineptitude at the plate, he had a 143 batting average in his first 23 games of the year, wore thin on Mets fans and management, and he was uh, uh, demoted to the Mets AAA affiliate, the Buffalo Bisons. Tim Harkness was awarded the first base job, with Snyder shifting to left field, and Crane Poole began becoming the Mets' everyday right fielder. The arrangement, however, did not last, as Crane Poole was sent down to the minors in July with a .190 batting average. He resurfaced later that season as a September call-up and went 4 for 5 with a run batting in, batted in, and a run scored in his first game back. He continued to hit better following his late season call-up and managed to bring his batting average up to 209 for the entire season. Now, when Harkness, Dick Smith, and Frank Thomas sharing first base, the original Frank Thomas, of course, Crane Poole received most of his playing time in right field at the start of the 64 season. On May 24, Joe Christopher was batting 303 and had won a starting job in right field. He was awarded the white right field job, and Crane Poole was demoted to Buffalo with a 139 batting average. Now, he only played 15 games with the Bisons, hitting three homers and batting 352 to earn a promotion back to the Mets. On his last day with the Bisons, he played all the 18 innings of a doubleheader before getting the call to come to Shea, where the Mets were playing two games the next day. 
On Sunday, May 31st, he played first base in Game 1 of the doubleheader against the San Francisco Giants. He also played first in the second game of the doubleheader, doubleheader which went 23 innings. Crane Pool ended up playing all 20 in, 23 innings, going 4 for 14 over the last two games. In all, he played 50 innings in two days. I wish we could have played another 40 minutes, he once said, saying of the record-setting doubleheader that lasted nearly 10 hours and ended at 11.20 p.m. That way, I could always say I played in the game that started in May and ended in June. Those two games were the start of a 13-game hitting streak that saw Crane Pool end the season with 10 homers, 45 RBIs, and a 257 at uh, 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 batting average. Now, prior to the 65 campaign, the Mets acquired future Hall of Fame pitcher Warren Spahn from the Braves. Now, Crane Pool gave up his number 21 to Spahn, who had wore the entire number his uh, that number his entire career, and he began wearing number seven. By midseason, Crane Pool was batting 287 with seven home runs and 37 uh, RBIs. He was named the Mets' sole representative on the All Star team, though he did not play. Now, by the end of the season, he batted 253 on a team that lost 120, 112 games. Now, 66, his, uh, his dinger total improved to 16, and helped, he helped the Mets avoid a last place finish, and he, uh, the only loss 95 games that season. Now, Cradepool was supposed to be part of a trade package along with Amos Otis and Bob Heiss when the Mets attempted to acquire the Braves' Joe Torre from the Cardinals. But, of course, Orlando Cepeda was eventually traded uh, in his place. Now, May 21st, 69, the Mets won their third game in a row for a 500 winning percentage, 36 games in the season, for the first time in history. But after a five-game losing streak, they won an 11-game winning streak that included a two-home run performance by Crane Pool against the Dodgers. By the end of the streak, the Mets were in second, same given games behind the Cubs. Now, Crane Pool continued to uh, have a, a strong effort, uh, and he hit a fifth-inning home run off of Ferguson Jenkins that gives the Mets a 1-0 lead over the Cubs on July 8th. But... Uh, the Mets then eventually scored three runs uh, late to uh, to uh, win that game and mount the comeback. They completed a remarkable Miracle 69 season in which a team backed by Crane Pool, Tom Seaver, and Jerry Kuzman won their first ever World Series title against the Orioles. They lost their first game but won four straight, and he hit a home run in game three of the season, series, a 5 1 nothing win over the Mets. Now, unfortunately, in June of the next year, he was demoted to the Mets affiliate to Tidewater Tides after only batting 118. He considered retiring, but he accepted, he accepted the re reassignment and batted 310 in 47 games at Tidewater. He was back with the Mets by the middle of August, but saw very little playing time. For the season, he only had 52 played appearances in 43 games. Now, in 71, he had a rebound year, hitting 280 with 14 homers and 58 RBIs. He also led the National League with a 988 fielding percentage. Uh, but by 73, he lost his starting job to future Expo John Milner. Crane Pool still managed to play 100 games and make 320 played appearances backing up Milner at first and Cleon Jones at left. Now, the Mets eventually won the NL East and uh, beating the Reds, where Crane Pool only played uh, in Game 5, where he uh, uh, drove in two runs of the Mets' series-clinching victory to lead the team to the 73 World Series, losing the A's. Now, he had 300 uh, seasons in 74-75, sharing first base with Milner and, of all people, Dave Kidman. Dave Kingman. When the Mets owner Joan Payson died on October 4, 75, she left her husband, the team to her husband Charles. While Joan had been a driving force behind the Mets, her survivors did not share enthusiasm. Charles delegated his authority to his three daughters, who left control of baseball matters to club chairman M. Donald Grant. According to the interview with Cradepool, he was the only Met player invited to Mrs. Payson's funeral. Now, in, in 76, the Mets enjoyed their second-best winning percentage in history with an 86-76 record. Crane Pool was again a regular first baseman, batting 292 with 10 homers and 49 ribbies. Now, he uh, his best years, of course, were 74 to 75, where he averaged 299 in 431 games with 21 homers and of 156 runs batted in. 
Now, unfortunately, when Lee Mazzelli showed up, he became the face of the organization. Now, Crane Pool, perhaps as a symbol of the Mets' past glory, emerged as a fan favorite as well, despite his relegation to a pinch-hitting role uh, from 74 to 78. Now, in that period, he had 396 as a pinch hitter, 17 to for 35 in the role in 74, still the, the Major League single-season pinch-hitting batting record. After the Mets traded Jerry Kuzman at the end of the 78 season, Crane Poole became the last of the original 69 Miracle Mets and the last original Met, of course. Now, when he retired after the 79 season, at the age of 34, he was the all-time Mets leader in eight offensive categories, which, of course, since surpassed. Now, true 2019, he still holds the bark of most games played with the Mets and became an enduring legend among Mets fans for having played 18 seasons. I think that total has been uh, broken by now. It could be wrong. Now, the the idea about Crane Pool's popularity came from this. He was young at the time when he started and was very useful at the end of his career. So he was always there, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Now, he did have some friction with the team's ownership group, um, but when the team was eventually sold in 79, uh, Cradepool was part of the group's offering a losing bid, so he also tried to buy, uh, to buy the team as well. As well. Now, Cradepool had a career fielding percentage of 994 as a first baseman and 975 as an outfielder. Overall, he was 993, very solid defensive player. Now, he was also known for a very infamous Gillette Foamy Shaving Cream a commercial from 78, which had a black and white uh, footage of Crane Pool striking out. And then when he said, I use Foamy, I started hitting better. So, I mean, uh, that, that, that sums up the commercial for me. Now, it also had a, uh, another commercial where he did for Foamy, lighting a candle in the bathroom and trying to shave through the blackout, of course, which ties into the 1977 uh, campaign. Now, he, uh, he eventually uh, became... Uh, a kind of a folk hero. He also appeared in a skit on Saturday Night Live in a cameo with Bill Murray during s his spring training talking about Chaco Chico Escuela's Garrett Morris's book, Bad Stuff About the Mets, which was a parody of Sparky Lyle talking about the Yankees. Now, post-retirement, he made he's living after retirement as a stockbroker and restaurateur and also has worked for a credit card processing company. He was inducted in the New York Max Hall of Fame in 1990 and, of course, has lived for many years in Old Westbury, New York. Now, the uh, the idea of Crane Pool, he survived a battle against diabetes. He had a toe removed in 20, uh, 2017 due to an abscess, and uh, by 2019, the kidney, uh, uh, the kidney transplant he needed showed up, and he uh, successfully uh, continued to be uh, a representative of the uh, uh, representative of the Mets on every level. Again, uh, Casey Stengel did like him in the two famous quotes, of course. He's only 17, he runs like he's 30. And he also said, we got a couple of kids here named Crane Pool and Guzan, and they're both 20 years old. In 10 years, Crane Pool has a chance to be a star. In 10 years, Guzan has a chance to be 30. Uh, very strange. So, ladies and gentlemen, Ed Crane Pool, just like uh, Jim Clancy with the Blue Jays and some of the original expos like Rusty Staub, he will always be a hometown favorite throughout Met Nation. But, ladies and gentlemen, I still go back to that day, that dirty OPG card and a smiling face of Ed Crane Pool was on the front of it. And I look at it in my collection. I still have it. And, ladies and gentlemen, all I know, if you be like Greg, uh, by uh, like Ed Crane Pool, to be dedicated to your team, I don't think he's ever paid for lunch or dinner in New York. I could be wrong. But he's loved by the Mets faithful, and we love him too. Thanks for listening. Bye.